the Galaxy Watch Active uh, 2 44mm variant. Not really a showstopper, nor is it a new or exciting prospect in 2022. It is, however, a budget choice for a lot of us. So, is it worth looking into it in 2022, now that it's a three-year-old design? Well, maybe I can help answer that question. So, let's get to unboxing it and see what it's all about. By the way, this is my wife's watch and I shall be pitting it against my own Huawei GT2 Pro, as it is my only other point of reference. I'm certain other reviewers have done a more thorough job on this, but I think it's important to get even the most obscure points of view, as those might offer different and refreshing conclusions to the product itself. So now to the unboxing. So the box itself is not quite as interesting as you might hope. Inside, you don't really get all that much. There's the watch itself, right here. Uh, I shall be getting to that later on. And here is the charging pad with a USB cable. And it's a wireless charging uh, coil based on magnetic uh, sec securing system or whatever. Here's the watch itself. Pretty good neck, but we'll get to that later on. So when you're trying to charge it, you just need to place this pad <clears throat> on top of the watch itself. And that's how it goes, though. Very disappointingly, this pad does not work with the Huawei. And is the exact polar opposite, as you can see here. Just it doesn't want to uh, secure into place. Uh, hence, I cannot use a single pad to charge up both smart watches. Uh, I would like to believe this is a, I don't know, an unfortunate coincidence. Though, by my cynical nature, uh, I sh would suspect otherwise. But let's get a look at the device itself. It's a great minimalist construction right off the bat. I love how this modern, almost bezel bezel-less look promotes a fresh and cutting-edge design, not playing on the oh-so-tiring retro theme of the smartwatches. Uh, a smartwatch is not a mechanical watch. It's not a luxury Swiss-made boutique marvel. Not, uh, nor is it, a, I don't know, a classic timepiece or a pocket watch. So, its form follows function all the way, and I'm happy to report that Sammy really went all in, in with this design. Um, I also love how they avoided rectangular shapes uh, with this watch. I just hate squared off watches, be they smart or otherwise. I don't know, I think that reminds me of a fake retro fab, a useless throwback to the 80s fashion statements. So I really don't like uh, squared off watches. I love the display. I think it's a bit crisper than my Huawei unit, um, though not by much. I am envious though of this bezel that bezel action simulation, so there's no real um, rotary dial on top of the crystal here on the crown of the watch, but really you can just swipe around the bezel and you can control several functions with it, so quite nice. I sorely m wish uh, Huawei <laughs> had this function on my so I could use it on my GT2 but I think there's some sort of patent involved here in terms of feature this watch active 2 does offer an interesting array of them 
accelerometer, gyro, heart rate, barometer, uh, function VO2 max, which shows your pulse and whatever. It also has GPS, a feature most important. It's quite okay, but there are some key bits missing compared to my uh, Huawei GT2 Pro, such as compass, compass and SPO2 sensor. So I think post-COVID times really require you to wear a watch with um, oxygen, blood level, monitoring system, whatever. So I'm sure glad I have that one on my GT2 Pro. Call me a paranoid, call me a hypochondriac, but I think it's a useful feature. The materials uh, used to build this watch are quite okay, though not the most premium, not over the top. The glass is Gorilla DX Plus, not sapphire as one might hope, though this is a more budget-friendly watch, so we will not hold it against it. Rather, the only letdown is this silicon strap, which, although resistant, um, doesn't age quite as nice as leather would. So yeah, there's a lot of wear into it. It holds down. It it's really resistant, don't get me wrong, but it's not nice to the touch anymore. Granted though, this watch is old, so really it's a hit or miss here. There are some scuffs and minor scratches here, but they're not of huge importance or consequence. Really the watch uh, reacts okay to um, medium moderate wear. This was not an intense, heavily used unit. In terms of specs, you get the Exynos 9110 10 nanometer chipset, dual core 1.15 gigahertz Cortex A53 CPU with Mali T720 GPU, or running Tizen OS. 5.5. The biggest letdown, however, is the battery. So moderate frugal usage with no connections active will give you four to five days average. Already you can see it's dropped from nine to from 100% to 97 in less than 10 minutes. Granted, I have been playing with the screen, but still. Um, this also shows you that intense endeavors with uh, GPS and phone connections and such will drop that time, that five day battery uh, average to about two days. Now that my friends is the biggest letdown for me and one of the decisive factors for which I opted to buy the Huawei GT2 Pro watch or any other Huawei smartwatch instead of the Samsung Galaxy family. Uh, I can get out of this one um, about two weeks worth of battery time, even more if I'm being frugal and uh, well really five days of intense usage with GPS and Bluetooth phone connection. Now granted, you can install apps on this Samsung and you cannot do those things on the Huawei, though I gladly accept this compromise. So, <clears throat> so as a daily driver, I think this watch is a great option on a budget. Great build quality, impressive feature array, surprisingly relevant in 2022. On the other hand, its biggest letdown is the dismal battery life. Would I consider it a collector's item? Well, <laughs> quite uh, naturally, no, not yet. Maybe in five years time, sure. For now, I would say that it has aged quite well. 
given that it's a three-year-old design, and it exudes that brand identity that makes it instantly desirable to some people, though not all. Um, it's uh, more than practical and not quite luxurious. Do I recommend it? Well, as a second-hand option, not really, since pre-owned ones will tend to be quite worn with low battery life issues. As a new discounted option, though, I think the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2 can be a great choice. This one cost about 180 euros in 2020. Um, so if you were to pay 100 euros for one in the store right now, be it a um, virtual store, you know, ordering off internet or just plain buying it, I think it would be a great deal, definitely grab worthy. So thank you for watching, get it? Please like, share and subscribe if you are feeling generous and remember, I buy and own useless, quirky and obsolete tech stuff so you don't have to. Bye-bye.